Hi. A while ago, Prodigy introduced a bunch of utility plugins, and one of them was called Prodigy PDF, which is a plugin that concerns itself with lots of annotation tasks that concern PDF files. In this video, I want to highlight some recipes from this uh, plugin. Um, and to do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some annotation. And in particular, what I'll be doing, I've got this uh, one academic article about uh, StarCraft algorithms. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but uh, this is also the file that I'm going to annotate. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to use a new recipe. The name of the recipe is called PDF Image Manual, and it is going to treat the PDF as if it's an image, um, and internally is going to make sure that the PDF gets properly translated into one. I will also be annotating, so the annotations will go into a Prodigy dataset, and I'm pointing it to a folder such that the recipe can just go over every single PDF in that uh, folder. I'm also going to concern myself with just a few labels. I want to detect the title, I want to detect separate paragraphs, and I also want to detect the figure uh, that is in the article. So uh, let's run this. And here's what it looks like. I've got an annotation interface over here, but you can see that it's now an image that contains proper text. So uh, one thing I could do is I could, uh, you know, select this title over here. Um, I can select, you know, uh, Maybe this paragraph, uh, maybe I'll select another paragraph over here. Um, but this is basically the image manual view that you might already be used to, it's just that now we also automatically translate PDF into an image such that you can uh, do a bit of annotation. And uh, it depends a bit on the setup, like sometimes it can be helpful to zoom out such you can see the entire image. Uh, personally, I like the fact that I'm also able to zoom in just to get the nitty gritty details right. Um, Cause maybe you wanna make sure that um, it actually cuts only a little bit over the paragraph and doesn't go overboard. But yeah, uh, the big idea here is I can uh, accept this, uh, I can save these annotations, and then now these image annotations can be used for uh, PDF detection tasks, if you will. But now that we have these annotations, I can also demo the second recipe that this plugin also provides. For that, I'll go back. Because what I can do now is I can reuse the PDF articles data set that I've just made, and I can do a little bit of OCR. The thinking here is that you might want to turn specific segments into text, and we have libraries like PyTesseract that are actually pretty good at that. So to demo this, uh, let's run the PDF OCR correct uh, recipe. This will be the new data set to store information into, and I'll be referring to this uh, data set that I just annotated. And because I'm doing OCR, it might make sense to only consider specific segments. Um, right now, I think the figure might not make as much sense, but let's uh, consider all the titles and paragraphs that I've annotated. And now, in this uh, updated interface, you can see the label uh, of the span that was annotated. You can see the image that is contained in the span that I selected, uh, and you can see the results of the OCR algorithm. So we can see that indeed uh, the current state of StarCraft AI competition and bots, uh, that got translated quite well here. So uh, that's an easy accept. I could also make changes if I wanted to, but uh, I think this one is pretty good. Um, and here we get to the second paragraph, uh, which is a whole bunch of text. Um, in general, um, PyTesseract does a pretty good job. Um, that's partially because these PDFs are, you know, um, nice and black and white and high contrast and all that. Uh, it's also because internally we are upsampling uh, this selection over here, which also definitely helps. The one thing that in this particular case um, is like a little bit literal um, is that you can see that uh, at some point there are dashes at the end over here. And this approach will actually literally copy those dashes as well. Uh, and it could be fine depending on the use case that you have, but um, you might be interested in just the actual text that's being written. So instead of having increase dash ingly, uh, you might be more interested in just having increasingly appear. If that is indeed a use case that you are concerned with, uh, what I can do now is go back to this recipe call over here, and I can add this one setting called fold dashes. Uh, this is going to make sure that uh, you get one string back with all the text. And you can see the change right away. Uh, in this title over here, we can see that everything is now moved onto a single line uh, because uh, we're merging at the end over here. Uh, but more particularly, uh, you can see that all the dashes that were 
uh, being rendered before here uh, are now also gone. And this is uh, a bit more of a proper representation of the text that's actually being written. All this does depend a bit on your use case though. So just know that there's a flag uh, that you can go ahead and play with. Uh, there definitely are also more ideas that we have for this plugin, but just these two recipes uh, on their own should already be uh, pretty nice and pragmatic for you to get started with your own use case. Um, so do let us know if you have any feedback on these recipes, but I mainly hope that these uh, plugins will prove useful to you.